Sony all but confirmed the PS5 Pro leaks. Take two joined the layoff train and Hasbro eye up new devs for Borders Gate 4. I'm Ash Dixon and this is Jinx News. With the PS5 approaching its fourth birthday, a lot of people were licking their lips at the prospect of a new pro console. It was a big deal last generation with the updated PlayStations and Xboxes bringing 4K graphics to gamers. This time round though, there's a whole load of questions on what a mid-gen update might actually bring to the table. So much so that Xbox is skipping one entirely this time round, leaving us with just Sony. Well, Sony have copyright striked a video on the PS5 leaks, making it look like the specs might actually be real. The Moore's Law is Dead YouTube channel was the first to share the info, though if you try and load up their video, you'll be met with a message saying it was taken down by Sony. It's also been verified that the documents shared were from the Sony Interactive Entertainment's developer network, so it's all looking pretty legit. So what are the specs? Well, let's just say it puts the mid in mid-gen update. Apparently the CPU is just straight up identical to the standard PS5, but with a higher frequency of 3.85 gigahertz, which is only a 10% increase. Things look better on the GPU side, which will have 33.5 teraflops instead of 10.28. But before you think, whoa, triple the power, sadly that's not quite how it works. Realistically, rendering will be around 45% faster. It will also have a little 1.2 gigabyte boost in RAM. But with the hardware looking pretty underwhelming, it's not all doom and gloom. See, the PS5 Pro is set to feature Sony's own resolution upscaler, similar to DLSS. That means while internally the console is churning out 1080p gameplay, what you'll see instead is that sweet 4K. And well, that should translate to far tastier frame rates. That's the theory anyway, how well Sony actually pull it off is another question entirely. But what do you think? Do you plan to pick up a PS5 Pro when it's out or were you hoping for more in terms of hardware? Let us know down in the comments. We seem to be bombarded with news of layoffs lately, so much so that we don't talk about it half the time because if we did, it would just be too damn depressing. But when yet another massive gaming company starts cutting jobs, you've kind of got to cover it. This time, it's the owners of GTA. Take-Two is cutting around 5% of its workforce and about $140 million worth of new projects. It's rather strange timing considering just two months ago, their CEO literally said there were no plans for layoffs, and it's not long now till GTA 6 is expected to drop, meaning they'll make an obscene amount of money. It was only weeks ago though that they bought Gearbox for $460 million, so it seems they're now trying to cut costs elsewhere. Overall, these latest cuts will save the company around $160 million. But it just goes to show, yeah, your company might make one of the best selling game franchises of all time, but that doesn't mean your job is safe. And imagine how that makes the rest of us feel. Despite the universal acclaim for Baldur's Gate 3, everyone was super understanding when Larian announced that they'd be abandoning the franchise. I imagine it did leave license holder Hasbro a bit bewildered, though after all, that's an obscene amount of money walking away. But don't you worry, they've got a plan B, as confirmed by their senior vice president of digital strategy, Eugene Evans. And behind closed doors right now, there's a whole load of meetings happening around who might take the Baldur's Gate reins. According to Evans, a lot of devs are actively approaching, which makes sense because money. But also, I can't help but feel they're not considering the absolutely Goliath shoes they'd have to fill. Not only do people want more of what Larian's made, but they'll expect Baldur's Gate 4 to be even better. So yeah, good luck with that. And the game was so huge that I can't see any smaller indie devs winning out, meaning it will likely be bought out by someone like Epic. And then before you know it, you'll be running around as a Starian in Fortnite. I'd also wager that Microsoft is hot on the Hasbro Hills, especially with Bethesda now under their wing. Either way, it just doesn't really feel like there's any good options here. There'll be a whole load of curiosity around whoever does get the license, but realistically the game will be four to six years away. And by then, everyone will have excitedly turned their attention to whatever Larian does next. But what do you think? Which studio could actually pull off Baldur's Gate 4? Perhaps they shouldn't make it at all. Hit us up down in the comments. Quick fire time, and first up, the director of the upcoming action RPG Stellar Blade has been having something of a love-in with the director of another game featuring an underdressed lady being a badass. Kim Hyung Tae recently did an interview alongside the director of Neo Automata, Yoko Taro, and it seems they both think each other's games are better. Taro said, Stellar Blade is such an amazing game, I think it's better than Neo Automata, and elaborated that Stellar Blade's graphics have reached a completely new generation of quality. In response, Kim said, 
the more we talk about it, the more I feel like Stellar Blade can't compete. I've been creating visuals all my life, so I can't quite match Yoko Taro when it comes to storytelling. Hey, fun boys, get the room. <laughs> I just think it's really funny how they're both like, you're breathtaking. No, you're breathtaking. You're Breathtaking. But look, Neo Automata is a fantastic game with some really clever ideas. So if that game director thinks Stellar Blade is good, then I'm interested to see what they've come up with. In other news, after almost 20 years, racing game enthusiasts have discovered an enormous skip in one of the most popular tracks in Mario Kart DS that flips existing speedrun records completely upside down. As you can see in this clip, players can bounce out of one section of the Waluigi pinball course and skip an entire section of road. This was discovered by two speedrunners, Zuma de Papaya and Juan Long X, and now means players can cut down the speedrun record from 39 seconds to under 32. Mario Kart DS notoriously features barely any skips like this at all, so the fact that one has been discovered after almost 20 years proves that there's still plenty for speedrunners to discover. And finally, over on Reddit, a very sad user by the name of Gigi the Great posted photos of his mangled up Steam Deck. At first, you may look at this and be angry that something could do this to such a precious gaming device. And then you find out it was done by this adorable little buddy, and suddenly, you're not so angry anymore. This 11 month old goodest girl is called Pebble and she managed to pull the console to the floor while it was charging before making a meal out of the analog stick and D-pad. The console still works, though it's a bit uncomfortable to use owing to all the stabby plastic edges it now has. But let's be honest, if us humans can't help but huff up those sweet Steam Deck fumes, how on earth was a dog meant to resist? So Valve, send them a new Steam Deck. Not for Gigi, but for Pebble. And that's the show. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider checking out our Patreon. It gives access to a boatload of content. And if you'd like to help us grow, do hit that like and subscribe. We'll see you tomorrow.